I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Uh, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, Proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. All right. Friends, give me just a second to collect myself. Golly. Uh, it's a, been a busy day, exactly. All right, I'm feeling good. I, uh, I just want to say, uh, before I begin here, that what an what a incredible gift it is to be gathered together. You know, throughout the, uh, these past months, we've been apart. And as a church, we have prayed, right? As a staff, we've prayed. I've prayed. I know that so many of you have been praying that God would, number one, he'd protect every one of us, that we would be able to come through this healthy, right? That there wouldn't be anybody from uh, our congregation who would, uh, who would fall ill, and that God would pr protect our community, that he would care for us, and that ultimately he would gather us back together. And so as you look around today, Know that this is a testament to the faithfulness of God to guide us through difficulty, to save us through the difficult things that we go through in this life, and to bring us back together. And he's done that, and it's a miracle. And I know this, it doesn't always feel like uh, a miracle. It doesn't always feel like God is doing uh, these incredible things. And, and so often it's only the relief or the, the perspective that we have in looking back that shows us those things clearly. But you are living in a time that is special. Uh, see it. See it clearly uh, for what it is. It is a gift from your God, and we are receiving that together today. Now, with that being said, I do want to talk about our gospel reading. Our gospel reading uh, is important in a number of ways. It's relatively familiar, I assume, to most of you who have gone to church for the bulk of your life. This story of sending out the uh, disciples turned apostles, and that term apostle means one who is sent, uh, so that's where that comes from. Once he sends a disciple, you're an apostle. So uh, they become the apostles. It lists them all out. Uh, if you're into uh, memorizing such things, you can do so right here. But additionally, uh, we see some things that are incredible. God, uh, Jesus gives power to those apostles to do the work that he himself has done, right? At the beginning of the passage, hey, go and preach the good news. The kingdom of God is near. It's at hand. It's right here among us. And that was true the moment he spoke it. That means that even in that moment before they, they understood what it was that they had the power and the capacity to do, God was already at work. That moment was already special, and they already were being blessed with the power that uh, they would only come to realize by hearing it from the mouth of Jesus. They were living in a special time. They were receiving a miracle. And they probably did not understand it fully in that minute. Now, 
when he sends them out, he gives them power to do all of these incredible things. And I know we're kind of jealous. Like, oh, you, get, you get to cast out demons. Um, you know, for those of us who have been parents, there are some tantrums where you're like, casting out demons. Now, what chapter was that? Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, suffice to say, uh, there, are, there are these other gifts that, that, frankly, like I don't possess, right? The, the ability to just go up and heal lepers, to uh, do... Um, uh, cure sicknesses and illnesses and injuries, those things that, uh, that are the common sufferings of us all, that they would be able to wash those away by the power of God that's given to them in Christ Jesus. And it's looking at that part of the passage that makes a great deal of sense to us, right? But, and we imagine that that's maybe the, the greatest miracle we hear of in this, uh, in this passage. But I'm here to tell you that it really is not. You know, it's the stuff that we see and that makes sense to us that we would love to, the powers we would love to have, the ability we would, we would love. It comes from a desire in us to cure some of the deepest challenges and problems that we have. You know, as people, we too, as, as Jesus describes uh, those of his time, are lost. It's easy to feel lost. Consider your life over these past few months, right? Uh, you might go to the grocery store. And you go like, I'm not lost. I know how to get to Aldi, right? But then it's time to go in. Do I wear the mask? Do I? Half the people are wearing the mask. Which, which half should I be on, right? I don't know. I don't exactly know how to live the right way, right? Am I supposed to, should I wear gloves? Which side of the carts are sanitized? I'm not sure. I want to live a good life. I want to be a good neighbor. I want to show love. I want to embody uh, the kinds of things that, that, that Christ has brought about inside of me. Uh, I want to do this right. But we're often so lost that it's difficult to even figure out, well, what that might look like and what that might mean. And it's that sense of lostness that comes to us very acutely when there's no place to turn for help. There's no way that we can uh, simply look at the world around us and intuit how we're supposed to carry on. And that sense of lostness that we, we can drown in it. And often we do. And there's this, also this sense of, of weakness, this sense that what we are, we know that it isn't enough. It's why we desire gifts like this. We see that there is work that needs to be done. We need only look around at the world we live in today and the struggles that we've had, whether it's with coronavirus or the civil unrest that has been uh, throughout the country. All of us, I think, would like to fix this. All of us would like to be able to speak a word or to act in such a way that would make things better, that could unite people together, that we could move beyond everything that plagues us. And yet, I think you and I both understand this. I'm not strong enough to do it. I don't have the answers, and even if I did, I know that what difference could I make as just one man? What difference could you make as, as one man or one woman or even one child? And I think we all deep down feel the answer is, well, probably not enough. And you know what? That may be so. And so we look to these gifts and we think, man, it would be great. Man, it would be great. But the real miracle in this passage comes before the giving of those gifts. That was a great miracle for the apostles. But for all of us, we, we can cling to an incredible word that we skip over so easily in this passage. It seems like a historical footnote rather than a promise from Almighty God. And it is this. When he saw the crowds, Jesus, that is, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful. That means that there is work to do. There's a lot of work. But the laborers are few. He says, therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You see, what God is giving to each and every one of us in this word, it's a better gift. It's a better gift because it speaks directly to the problem that we all have and that, that is highlighted by the giving of the gifts to the apostles. The lostness and the weakness that we possess within ourselves, the struggles that we have, God doesn't look down upon us and say, hey, buck up, 
right? It's time to get stronger. We know that. We know that life is going to demand a great deal from us. We, we know it as we're, we're kids and we're starting to grow up. We feel like, man, there's a lot to do. And we become adults, and, and there's, there, it turns out there is a lot to do. We become parents, and we realize there's no way I can do this well. It's, it is a struggle from top to bottom. But God does not come with a hammer to beat you down and say, you'd better get strong enough to do this yourselves. But rather, he says, pray to me for help. Pray to me for help. So I will send more. This is what we've been driven to in this time, to pray to God that he would bring us back together. Well, why is that? It's because we know this. We know very much that God will put on our plates more than we can, we can handle alone, but not more than we can handle together. That God's plan for us is to draw us together so that we might be his people united. And in this, there is a gift, that gift of, uh, 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 that dispels the lostness and the weakness because we draw strength from one another. Now, I will say this. There is a time as well when we can't be together. And we've lived through this, right, as a church, to be sure. But we live through it in other times as well. And there are other people struggling with that today. We have uh, brothers and sisters um, in Christ who are still in nursing homes, still isolated, still alone. What about for them? Is this the only hope to be eventually drawn back together? No. What about the time uh, that, that you have lived in or maybe are living in where it, at least in your mind and in your heart you feel alone and you feel lost? And though there might be a crowd of people around you, it doesn't matter because in here it's a void. What about those times? Is the answer, well, I'll just be around more people. You know, you just got to get out more. No. But God says, pray to me and I will bring you help. And that same God who has gathered us together, the same God who has blessed us with his gifts, he's given his son. He's given his son so that we would, we would have God with us. Not high above in heaven, but down here in the dirt with us in the same struggles of life in the same difficulties, in the same lostness, in the same weakness. He's given us his word so that we would have ever present with us not only our prayers ascending to God, but his response to us. And he has also given us his Holy Spirit to live within us so that we uh, can be guided um, and comforted by God himself. This is God's gift for us. Not to make us iron men and iron women strong enough to, to stand up to whatever we might face. But to gather us together. To call us together as a church, as a community. To bless us with himself, with his gifts. So that in our weakness, together, we receive everything that God desires to give us. It's a miracle, but it doesn't always feel like a miracle. It's a gift. It doesn't always feel like a gift. And I certainly hope that church doesn't often feel like a duty, though sometimes, let's be honest, it can. But understand where it is that we are. We stand at the doorstep of receiving a gift that we have been longing for and God has been faithful to bring. And that is a wonderful miracle. And that is God's gift to you today. So let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you have seen us lost like sheep without a shepherd. And you did not tell us to figure out where to go, but you sent a shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have seen our weakness, and you have not told us to grow strong but you have brought us help. You have loved us. And you have gathered us together to be your people and to be one another, uh, to be with one another, to be your gift to each other. 
Lord, bless us with unity, bless us with peace, and strengthen us together, uh, one church, uh, one family, your people. In Jesus' name, amen.